everybody and welcome to another Star Wars Black Series.net video spotlight. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Amazon exclusive Trooper 4 pack. Now I don't really know what to call this other than calling it a Trooper 4 pack. I think on Amazon's site it's referred to as Amazon exclusive Star Wars Stormtrooper 4 pack. These aren't all really four Stormtroopers. There's two Stormtroopers and two Clone Troopers in here. So a lot of people refer to this as the evolution of the Stormtrooper pack kind of going back to the old evolution sets that Hasbro would do for Star Wars where you get the three figures. But I don't think it's actually officially called anything on the packaging. It's just Star Wars Black Series and it has the name of the troopers, but there's no designation like Evolution of the Stormtrooper 4-pack. The recent Target exclusive Poe Dameron versus Raya Control Stormtrooper has the same deal where there's nothing on the box referring to it as a certain named pack but the target sales ads and I think maybe the computer system refers to it as the Escape from Destiny. So there's a chance that this also has some kind of internal name and I just don't know it. Or it could be that evolution name internally. But for now, I'm just going to call it the Trooper 4 pack. Alright, um, let's talk about the box and then we'll move on to the figures each individually for this review. First of all, I have to say that the box that I'm showing you is pretty damaged. Amazon sent me this nice crushed box which is pretty cool of them, and it's currently sold out. It's phasing in and out on the site. Sometimes it's sold out, sometimes it's back in stock. So I really don't want to send this back and take the chance that I'm not going to get one at all. Uh, so I'm just going to deal with this crushed box. But I apologize, I don't have something better to show you, but Amazon did not learn the lesson with the Vintage Collection Slave 1, apparently, and didn't really um, protect these boxes, sending them out. They're just getting mangled and crushed. I'm seeing a lot of people reporting online their boxes are coming smashed and I got one too. It's really disappointing because otherwise this box is awesome. I really really like this box. First you get this this panel up front with all this art for the different troopers and it matches you know the the box art of the new phase three black series figures. There's this really nice uh, I, I don't really know how to describe it. It looks like a vintage art to me uh, where it's got these nice lines in all the art that gives it nice shading. We've got the uh, First Order Stormtrooper Officer up here. We've got the Imperial Stormtrooper here. The Episode 2 Phase 1 Clone Trooper Commander here. And then we've got a Phase 2 Clone Trooper here. And then we've got a standing group of First Order Stormtroopers written here. And then we've got, in red down below, descriptions of each of the figures that's in this set. And the Star Wars Black Series logo. The top of the box features that same grouping of First Order Stormtroopers kind of lined up on one panel and the Black Series logo on the other. This side of the box mimics the the rest of the Force Awakens Black Series Phase 3 figures where you've got a red panel on the side and a description of what figure you've got. In this case we've got the different logos for uh, the First Order and the Imperial Stormtrooper and then we've got the, um, the Clone Trooper uh, style logos there. Back of the box features descriptions for each one of the characters and that same art put underneath each one. Uh, I'm going to read these to you really quick. Phase 1 Clone Trooper Commander, created in secret by the Kamino and Cloners. The first Clone Troopers were deployed to protect the Jedi during the Battle of Geonosis. Phase 2 Clone Trooper uh, says, As the Clone Wars drew to an end, Chancellor Palpatine issued Order 66, turning the Clone Troopers against their Jedi allies. Imperial Stormtrooper, under the tyrannical rule of the Empire, Stormtrooper legions ruthlessly crushed resistance across the galaxy. First Order Stormtrooper officer, equipped with sleek armor and powerful weapons, the Stormtroopers enforce the will of the First Order. Okay, so then this is where it gets really cool. Since it's a four-figure set, and it's, as you can see, this is a kind of a small box, there's a Velcroed panel along this side, where you've got that Trooper written in sort of a grayish color, Star Wars Black Series logo, and two spots of Velcro so that the box unfolds to display all four figures. I really, really like that. That's why I wish this box hadn't showed up damaged because I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the way this thing looks. I love the way it folds out instead of just being stuck like this all the time. It's just a neat kind of book style packaging that really, really impressed me. Um, I wish it was not damaged because I would have loved to have kept uh, these displayed in this box. Uh, but what can you do? So we've got all four figures laid out inside here. Again, this art for each figure put down here. The descriptions down here as well. 
You've got the red backgrounds and the layout with each figure and their weapons. Each one includes two weapons. Um, and we'll get into more detail as we take them out of there, how they match up to their previous counterparts. Uh, okay, so I think that about covers everything on the packaging. Uh, let's get these guys out of here and we'll take a look at them loose. Okay, so here's all four figures loose. We've got the Clone Trooper Commander, we've got the Phase 2 Clone Trooper from Episode 3, we've got the Imperial Stormtrooper and the First Order Stormtrooper Officer. Now since all four of these figures are uh, basically repaints or slight tweaks of older figures, let's take a look at each one of them in comparison to their older release and show you what's new. First of all, um, the Phase 2 and the Clone Trooper Commander use the same body. So there's no reason to tackle the articulation twice on the same type of figure, so we're just going to do this once to cover the articulation on both of these guys. Um, we've got, uh, let's see, we'll start at the feet and work our way up. We've got an ankle that hinges up and down, and then it's on a rocker joint so that it plugs into the foot at an angle. You get some really cool side-to-side -side movement there for some great posing. We've got double-jointed knees, both at the top and the bottom of the knee joint. We've got a swivel at the top of the hip, and the hips at the uh, pelvis area, they swing out and up and down. A ball-jointed torso, shoulders that are swivel up and down and then hinge in and out, though it's pretty restricted by this uh, shoulder armor. We've got a double-jointed elbow, and then we've got wrists that plug in so they swivel. And then on the uh, left hand, they hinge in and out. And on the right hand, they hinge up and down. So you get some really cool movement for holding guns that way. And the heads themselves are mounted on a ball joint, although it's not really that free of movement to be called a ball joint. You've got kind of a swivel back and or side to side and then a hinge up and down, but not like an all-around movement on that head. So it may not actually be an actual ball joint underneath there. I haven't taken one of these heads off to see what it looks like underneath there. But it does have a lot of movement up and down and side to side, so even if it's not really mounted on a full ball, you get a lot of articulation out of that neck. So that covers the articulation on the body for these two guys. Let's get this guy out and focus just on the clone commander for now. Now this is the fourth, I'm sorry, the, yeah, this is the fourth release of the uh, episode two phase one clone trooper. We had him in plain white, uh, which I don't think I grabbed one of those for comparison here, but I will for the pictures. And then we had him in green, which is the sergeant, and in red, which is the captain. So this is our now uh, fourth release, but the third one with color, now that we've got the yellow on him. As far as the figure itself goes, it looks like the plastic used is a little closer to the red, the captain, than it was the sergeant. The sergeant almost has like a dingy white plastic, whereas these are kind of a brighter white plastic. The only one now that we're missing is the blue, which I think is lieutenant. And then we've covered all four, or oh, four of the colored versions of the clone trooper, and then the standard clone trooper for episode two. Um, the weapons he comes with are the long rifle, and it's got sort of some white highlighting this time around, and then the, the smaller, just blaster gun. Now I don't think, yeah, the, the previous releases of those guns for the single carded clone troopers from phase, or for episode two, had a sort of a darker gray highlight. This one's more of a white highlight. And I gotta be honest that the paint app is not the best on this gun. It's kinda, kinda sloppy. The edge lines are pretty sloppy on my gun. Um, as far as the figure itself goes for paint, the only parts that I really have an issue with are the same ones that I have an issue with on the single releases in that they paint these knees and elbows are molded in black plastic and then painted over and there's just no getting that white as to match the white of the plastic. It's just a shade off. Um, you won't be able to tell as much in the video as you would in the pictures, but it, it isn't a perfect match. Now I don't claim to be an expert on uh, clone trooper armor, so I don't know how accurate this is, but it looks pretty good to me as far as the, the body build and the different segments of the armor, it looks pretty close to what I've seen in the movie, and uh, I don't really have much of an issue here with any of the sculpting itself. If, if I have any issues whatsoever, it's that the paint maybe is not the cleanest, and that matching that non-matching paint that doesn't match up with the plastic on the legs that the white plastic used. So let's get him out of the way. And the next one up is the Phase 2 Clone Trooper. 
Now this is a big draw for the set right here. Um, a lot of people like this Phase 2 Clone Trooper, the Episode 3 version of this, the Clone Trooper. And this is the first time he's being released in the line in this style. Uh, we've had plenty of Episode 2 clones, but as far as Episode 3 clones go, we don't really have anything yet other than this one right here. I'm going to lower this just a bit to get a full view of him. The closest we have so far is Commander Cody, and he's a pretty different look for his armor. He's not your just standard Episode 3 clone. So this is the first time we're getting just a standard Episode 3 clone. And I'm kind of surprised that the standard white version is coming in this 4-pack instead of like a special, I don't know, like a Shock Trooper or 501st or some colorway that makes it sort of unique. I think this would be a big seller if it was single-carded. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to play out when they get around to doing some single-carded Episode 3 clones. The head sculpt itself is the only thing that's new on the figure, and it is pretty sharp. Again, though, I'm running into some paint slop here and there. Uh, the eye line is not the cleanest paint, and the same deal with those elbows and knees. That white is just a little bit off from the plastic. But other than that, it's a pretty solid figure, pretty cool, and the, a pretty unique piece to this set. It comes in the same two weapons that we just saw on that Clone Trooper Commander, but this time around they're just all solid black. We've got the long rifle and then just the standard blaster. Both fit in his hands well, uh, no complaints there. Love that posing from the wrists. So overall, pretty cool figure. All right, next up is probably the weakest figure in the set, and that is the repaint of the Imperial Stormtrooper. He includes a long blaster pistol and a, I'm sorry, a long blaster rifle, and then the standard Imperial blaster and they both have this sort of silvery paint job to them. They're not standard black like the other weapons we've seen so far in the set. They have this nice silver sheen over all of them. And the thing that makes this one unique as compared to the original release of the Stormtrooper is all of these, I guess they're calling them blaster marks. Although if an Imperial Stormtrooper got shot up this much, I would think he would just be dead. I don't think he would just have a bunch of just spots on him where he got shot. The figure itself is molded in a slightly shinier plastic than the single release Imperial Stormtrooper was. But other than the difference in plastic and these blaster bolts, you're looking at pretty much the same figure here. And the articulation on him, let's look at it here, is a hinged ankle that goes up and down and then does that little rocker joint thing. Double jointed knee, swivel at the top of the hip, uh, hips that then pivot in and out and up and down right at the pelvis, and then he's got a ball-jointed torso, shoulders that hinge up and down and swivel up, or I'm sorry, hinge in and out and swivel up and down, the double ball-jointed, or I'm sorry, <laughs> double ball-jointed, a double-jointed elbow, and then a wrist that swivels where it inserts into the arm, and then I think on his, they, yeah, the left goes in and out, the right goes up and down, his joints are a little tighter overall than the Clone Trooper body we just looked at. It's got this ratcheting movement in a lot of them, like the shoulders have sort of a ratcheting thing going on to help it hold poses better. And the wrists themselves are a lot tighter and harder to move. Um, the head, too, is more of a ball joint than we saw in that previous clone body, where you get all over movement, and then it also has a hinge to make it go up and down. Pretty nicely articulated body on the Stormtrooper. I don't really have a complaint as much with especially the shoulders. He gets more movement in and out. And I do like that ratcheting thing they put into him, so it, it really does help hold the poses. I feel like the joints aren't going to get as weak on this. Um, as far as these blaster bolts go, he's got, let's see, um, he's got one here on his right thigh. He's got two on his chest, one on his sh right shoulder, a little bit on his helmet here. The back is pretty much clean. I think you could probably take these off with maybe some nail polish remover or something if you really just wanted a more standard Stormtrooper. Uh, and then you wouldn't have to feel like this is the, kind of the stinker of the set. He has a holster that works in the back. You just plug the gun right into it, the smaller blaster, and then he can just hold his blaster rifle. All right, that covers everything on that guy. Last but not least is the First Order Stormtrooper Officer. Now, I haven't taken a look at this figure yet on the site the standard First Order Stormtrooper. So um, this is all new territory when it comes to articulation and the figure itself and all that stuff. 
Now he uses the same body as the First Order Stormtrooper standard release. Uh, so the articulation is going to be the same on these two guys. Oops. The only thing new that we've got going on here is that pauldron. Uh, so if you've gotten, if you already bought the First Order Stormtrooper, this isn't going to be new territory for you, but it is for me. So let's take a look at it. All right, so it looks like he's got uh, ankles that hinge up and down, and then they move on that rocker joint. He's got double jointed knees at the top and the bottom. He's got a hip that swivels at the top, a little bit above where the armor line is, into the black area. And then he's got one of the hinge in and out, and then swivel up and down. He's got, mm, I don't really feel an ankle or waist joint there, but he does have a jointed torso, but man, that is tight. Get some movement. Ah, oh, there you go. Now it's moving free. So he's got a, a ball jointed torso that moves pretty freely. Moves all around once you get it worked out there. And then he's got shoulders that uh, swivel up and down and then hinge in and out. He's got one single joint at the um, elbow instead of a double joint like he has at the knees here. It plugs in so it swivels and then it's got a hinge that makes it go up and down. And then at the wrist we've got a swivel where it plugs into the arm and then hinges in and out, and we have in and out over here, or up and down? In and out, the same over there. Okay, so it's the same on both hands for him. And then his head is mounted on a ball joint that also feels like it, yeah, hinges up and down. Now, uh, like I said before, the only difference here is the pauldron. And a lot of us just assumed that it would be the same pauldron as the Snow Trooper officer from Toys R Us, but the pauldron mold is actually slightly different. There's a little bit of a an extra piece right here that isn't on this one, so it looks like it is a different piece. Um, it may be even a little bit wider on the snow, snow Trooper Officer. I haven't taken one of these off yet to get a good look at them separately, but it definitely is a different mold. Um, kind of interesting that they wouldn't have just cheaped out on that and uh, used the same piece. The other couple differences that I noticed between the standard release and the uh, Officer here is this little black detailing on the belt is not here on the standard release snow trooper, I'm mean, sorry, standard release stormtrooper. It was on the San Diego Con version. This black line was painted in, but it's not on this, this regular release. And these hands have a lot more uh, black on them than either the standard release or the San Diego Con version. So you can see like this black here that highlights all around the hand. And over here, it's highlighted all around his hand. You'll see this better in the standard pictures on the gallery that we'll link here at the bottom of the review, um, but it is a couple of little interesting differences. This is a really cool figure overall. Um, same deal where you've got this white paint on the elbows, I mean, I'm sorry, on the knees, where it's that black plastic that's being used for the joint, but it's not as bad here because he doesn't have the elbow piece too, um, and the, the belt paint is the same deal where it's a slightly off color from the white used for the plastic. He comes with two weapons, just like the single release First Order Stormtrooper. He's got his blaster rifle, I guess you want to call that, and the smaller blaster pistol. Both of these are white and black, uh, and they both can plug into his leg. Ooh, actually the, the little pistol doesn't want to stay in. Ah, there it goes. They, either one of these can plug into his leg using this little clip along the side. I'm always a big fan of, of stuff where they can store their weapons. I've said that about a billion times, but I really like that. Okay, overall the set is pretty cool. You get four pretty unique figures, even though they all are reusing parts, they've done something different on each one of them to make it worthwhile to pick it up, especially if you're an army builder. Um, and at 80 bucks, uh, you're, you're only looking at 20 bucks a figure, and that's pretty good now. Um, a lot of the single carded Black Series are showing up at $21.99, so they're like 22 bucks a piece, so getting a set of four for 80 is not so bad, especially if you're a Prime member, you could somehow get some free shipping going on, and that's even better. Um, the set's moving in and out as far as stock goes, so you really gotta keep an eye on the site to snag one of these when you get a chance. I would think that eventually they're gonna be completely sold out. Um, this is not gonna be something they're just gonna keep making and making and making. So if you see it pop up again, and you're interested in army building, I wouldn't dilly-dally. I'd go ahead and snag the set. There'll be a link in the info section below to order the set and also for a gallery of pictures, like I said before, so you can check them all out. And uh, I think that about wraps it up for this one. So uh, stay tuned to the channel for more Black Series reviews, and we'll see you guys next time.